Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, your host, uh, joined by Jerry Hamilton. We're going to do a little roundup uh, for this edition of uh, Roundup, brought to you by Allegiant Digital Marketing. Uh, we want to talk about something that Jerry and I have been mentioning and in, in talking about off screen for a little bit, and that's uh, a little title we call Trending Texas. And it could mean two different, a couple different things, and we're going to go over that today. We're not going to talk just about guys that are recruiting and trending towards Texas but also guys on the current team that are trending in the right direction for Texas. So in other words, we're going to mix and match a little recruiting with team talk here uh, and, and get going in that direction. Uh, Jerry, I'm going to start it off with a little team talk and then yep. you'll transition. You'll do the, the recruiting piece. My first guy uh, for team is Trey Moore. Uh, young man out of uh, Smithson Valley by way of UTSA had 14 and a half sacks yesterday. Jerry, it's not just me that's hearing this. I mean, CJ, Rod Babers, uh, it, even Steve Sarkeesian's talked about it a little bit. You've heard it. Quickness and know-how. Yeah. Those two, I mean, yes, he's not the biggest guy, right? I mean, we, we've talked about this. He's not the first off the bus, but he may be the first one on the field. <laughs> and, you the know, first one and, in the backfield. Yeah, first one in the backfield. That's a better way to put it. My point being is... I. He is trending, and his uh, commitment, et cetera, is trending in the right direction for Texas in 2024. And I, I, I would say this because I want to make sure people understand how big a factor I think he could be. Steve, I, look, I'm not sure Pete Kwiatkowski has had a pass rusher as good as Trey Moore since he's been in Austin. I actually, I, I know that that most people feel that way. Matt, that, that this isn't talking about the future because Colin Simmons could usurp them all eventually, right. right? But how that changes the complexion of the Texas defense in 2024 could be significant because getting after the quarterback has not been something Texas has done exceedingly well. But now they're adding, not only are they adding uh, Trey Moore, they've already got an Anthony Hill we, that we know is a little plus on that. Uh, Baron Sorrell's getting older, Ethan Burke. Uh, Trey Moore just adds fuel to the fire a little, a little bit for that defense. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, like you said, 14 and a half sacks last year is a big number. I don't care where you're playing because he was the guy that was game planned against for UTSA. So he did that as being the guy that people wanted to take out. Um, but again, you know, he, the other thing that's impressive to me is why he's trending up is there's not many transfers that are talked about by a head coach like in that way. Like they could be a captain of a team. You're trending up on the field and off the field since you've been in Austin. And it was off the field before, now it's on the field. So he's he's got all the arrows going up right now. Not yeah. many players can say that. Yeah, no doubt. All right, hey, Jerry, I want to I go from here uh, and uh, say a little bit and have you take the first recruit. Okay. Now, we're going to do five of each. What is it, Who's the first recruit that you would say is now trending for Texas? You know, I think trending up for Texas. Uh, I, I like DeCorian Mora. Look, I think he that was the first practice he had been to at Texas, where he actually got to watch the Texas team practice. That's different than going to a game. It's different when you go and you sit in a team in a position meeting room, a team meeting, and then you're at the practice. Okay, and you're watching guys you played with in high school or youth football. Jordan Zonta, Rebel, some of those guys. That's two to totally different things. When you and a family member is on a practice field and you're watching the practice and you're seeing it, when you're that close, you can feel it. You can not only see it, but you can feel it. You can see the coaching. You can feel the coaching. You can hear the coaching. You can do the same with the players. And then you got a chance to spend time with the players Saturday evening after the recruiting event. I Look, he's committed to LSU. I think this recruitment plays out a while. I know some people are thinking there's going to be a flip or something soon. I don't. Could things change? Sure. I I I don't I don't. I could be wrong, um, but I think this recruitment will play out. Um, the the new news I have there too is he's originally been scheduled to be at the uh, spring game April twentieth. He's not going to be able to make that because that's the day of the regional track meet, which he qualified for. So if he's there, he'll be there in the regional track meet in some capacity. So he won't be at the spring game. Uh, but he's not going to be at LSU spring game this weekend. He's going to be at OT7, seven, seven on seven. So this is going to go into the June official visits. Oregon, Ohio State, he's going to go see those places. I think it comes down to Texas, LSU, and I think Texas is trending up for DeCorey and Moore. Does that mean it's imminent? No. 
but they're headed in the right direction. Got it. All right. Uh, before we go to the next uh, group, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, uh, the Roundup brought to you by our friends at Allegiant Digital Marketing. Did you know that among the top nine challenges business owners face, the most difficult ones include finding customers, increasing brand awareness, digital advertising, and lead generation? What if I could point you to a local homegrown agency here in Austin that could solve those problems for your business once and for all? For more than 25 years, Allegiant Digital Marketing founder and CEO Chad Markham, a UT grad and instructor of the Digital Marketing Boot Camp here at UT Austin, has helped thousands of businesses overcome these challenges. Take advantage of their hook em horn special and save up to $2,500 in advertising. Visit Allegiant Digital Marketing forward slash on Texas football to learn more to help your business today. That's on to Allegiant Digital Marketing or Allegiant Digital, excuse me, dot com forward slash on Texas football. All right, Jerry, let's talk a little bit more about the next guy I want to I want to go over as it relates to uh, the team. And that for me is Jaden Blue. Um, he has taken the ball, the bull by the horns is the best way to put it, right? Ever since he made the decision almost a year ago to not transfer and instead really try to hone his craft and become a better running back <clears throat> at Texas, it's been nothing but blue sky, uh, in, in my opinion, right? I mean, he's he's when Jonathan Brooks went out, he took on an increased role. When uh, Jonathan Brooks, you know, he became the big play guy in that backfield, even more so than Cedric Baxter, who is RB1 right now. Um, Jaden Blue continues to trend up. Uh, a year ago at this time, I don't think either one of us would have said this. No, we said what we said about Jaden Blue is, and I still think it's his strength. He has great hands out of the backfield, and he's really good in space because of his speed and explosiveness. Those things remain. I think he's finding better fit, and Texas is finding a better fit for him in the run game. Right. He's you're not going to hand it to him 12, 15 times on inside zone. If you do that square peg round hole. Uh, but what to, what that's doing for Jaden Blue is is Texas. And this is what makes Steve Sarkeesian really good is he's crafting ways to maximize Jaden Blue. And it's a really good combination for Jaden Blue. If you have the inside zone guys, whether that's a whether that's a Cedric Baxter, whether that eventually is a Christian Clark. Right. In, in some regard or J uh, Jarrett Gibson. Well, Jaden Blue's the one guy of those that's the best space player. So that crafts a great spot for him to be in, especially if him and Cedric Baxter are your one, two. Those guys are going to play off of each other well. The other thing is, I think Texas is going to run more pony package, uh, two back stuff this year. Well, that's good for Jaden Blue, and that's good for Quinn Ewers. That's good for Steve Sarkeesian because that gets more speed on the field. You have two threats at running back, both of them can catch the ball out of the backfield. And you can do some different things with those guys. So I think I think that's all good news for Jaden Blue. The key, though, is uh, for I've always said for Jaden, don't expect him to be something he's not. Maximize what he is. Yep, I agree with that. And I think I think Sark knows how to do that. Uh, uh, all right, next group, next guy or, or, or person that you want to mention for trending up as it relates to recruiting. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to hit on the OL real quick. Okay, um, John Mills, I think, continues to. Uh, be a guy that's trending well for Texas. He was in, he was on campus uh, for an uh, unofficial visit. That was a multiple day unofficial visit. He was in town with his father. Uh, his father made the last trip January 20th as well. Um, I think he continues to trend towards Texas. Now, again, I think there's could be a couple of official visits. Look, he has multiple family members that played at University of Washington or UW, as you call it, on the West Coast, right? And that's in various sports, like three or four family members that were Division I athletes there and attended University of Washington. That official visit scheduled for May 31st through June 2nd. Uh, Texas is June 14th through 16th. So do I think anything's imminent there? No. Do I think Texas is headed in the right direction with John Mills? I continue to think they are. Then there's the Coleman brothers, uh, Jordan and Devin at Cedar Hill, two of the three triplets, the biggest triplets you'll ever cover in this business. Jordan, 6'5", 360. Uh, Devin, a, 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 a smallish 6'4 and a half, 320. <laughs> um, I, I think after this weekend, both those guys are trending to Texas. And I think maybe they were after Devin got offered. But again, you're sitting there talking about an, an unofficial visit where you're in a position meeting room, you're in a team meeting room, you're at a practice. And Jordan Coleman, even I, I heard him say it in the interviews. 
I had a chance to talk to Texas players and ask them questions. Those two kids have personality. They're not scared. They're going to ask people questions. They're going to ask their high school offensive line coach, Marcus Hutchins, questions about when he played at Texas. These aren't shy guys that are sitting back listening. They're going to ask questions. So that this was an opportunity for those guys to ask questions. And from everything I've gathered, they liked the answers they heard. Again, these recruitments play out a little while, but I do like where Texas is at with three offensive linemen. So that's I'm covering three guys with one position. <laughs> Fair enough. I want to take this next one uh, on trending Texas uh, in the right direction. David Benda. Yeah. Um, and I, I would say this. A lot of people say, oh, well, you're just picking him because Sark put him out there as the leader, the first defensive guy. It's actually not just that. Um, and I've heard that he's coming on as a player, too. Now, is he going to end up being all conference or any of that stuff? That's not what I'm getting at. Right. But Texas needed an older linebacker to to kind of uh, manage the uh, what's going to end up being a change from Jalen Ford uh, on to Leonga LaFau or, some, or, or, or Ty Anthony Smith, one of the young guys, right? But they needed a one-year mesh between those two so that the guys would really be physically ready. And David Benda is trending in that direction for Texas. I think he fits very well into what Texas is doing. So it's not just Steve Sarkeesian talking about leadership. It's actually his play on the field. Already had a really good scrimmage on Saturday as well. And, and you know, I think this started with Benda after the Oklahoma game. When he was a man enough to talk about, and this is, goes over yeah, well. He, with was. he, he was. Yeah. was man enough to talk about something bad that happened and, and, and hurt his team. And if, if you have that level of maturity and uh, ability and willingness to talk about it publicly, um, you score a lot of points with coaches. Now, he didn't put it on somebody else. He didn't make excuses. He went out there and owned it. So, look, that guy coming back, that they got one of their leaders back in the program. And, and he's he has shown and proven through actions uh, that he, he's willing to take on that role. Um, and, and he he kind of embraces that, right? Um, you don't you don't own up the bad things that happen without that. But now I think another year in the Texas program, another year playing linebacker. I think that he continues to get more comfortable. Uh, multiple years in the scheme now, right? Knowing it's my last year, uh, deciding to make that decision to come back for that last year. I think there's a lot of things trending. Uh, for David Benda, I think he's one of the guys that when he speaks, people have respect for him. That goes a long way before you do anything on the field. I think he's, again, like Trey Moore for me, Bobby, I think he's trending on the field and off the field. Uh, it, very interesting. Uh, so three guys we've mentioned so far trending on the field for Texas, uh, Trey Moore, Jaden Blue, and now David Benda. You've already mentioned DK Moore, DeCorey Moore, and uh, the offensive line trio, you think, in some ways at, at the University of Texas are – in recruiting, who's your third person to watch uh, from a trending and a recruiting perspective? Yeah, I, I continue to uh, like Cade Phillips trending for Texas. Uh, he was on campus with his parents this weekend. I think he had a great visit. That was a big offer when it happened. Yes, his brother's attending a and going to graduate soon. Had a devastating knee injury, just never been able to come back and play. Um, he'll be at LSU. Corey Raymond's take, making a big run, and LSU are making a big run there. He'll take official visits to LSU, A&M, and Texas. Texas, June 21st through 23rd. I continue to believe this is trending in a positive direction for Texas. And can things change? It's recruiting. Things can change. But right now, I think Texas continued to help themselves with Cade Phillips because when Cade was at the January 20 junior day, that was before Texas really ramped up on him. So he didn't meet with Steve Sarkeesian that day. There was 150 kids on campus. Um, and, and I know that he was a little down about that. He got a lot of time with Steve Sarkeesian and Blake Gideon on Saturday, as did his family. Uh, so I think I think Texas is continuing to trend in the right direction for Cade Phillips. Headed into uh, spring visit to LSU this weekend, um, and then official visits to LSU, A and M, and Texas in June. I'll tell you what, the fourth person I'm going to mention, Jerry, as it relates to this, is somebody that's got, not going to be much of a surprise because we talked about him. And it's kind of weird. It's Trey Wisner. And the reason I say it's weird is because here we are. We just talked about Jaden Blue, right? And we know Cedric Baxter's RB1. Yet we're mentioning another running back that's trending in the right direction. And a part of it is what Steve Sarkeesian talks about is with special teams. Yeah. He's making sure he's making an impact for the team. But again, we heard on Saturday he ran really well as a running back. 
Um, Trey Wise are trending in the right direction because I do think, much like David Benda, they needed a, a piece to, to bridge uh, the gap a little bit. Well, they need that on special teams. Look, Keaton Crawford and Keelan Robinson were two of the best gunners yeah. in college football um, and just tremendous. They need somebody like that to come up and take that next step for them. Maybe it's him and Jelani McDonald. We, you know, there's a number of different possibilities. But the fact that he's not going to be denied, it, it just he's going to be another guy that's trending in, in the right direction for Texas. Let, let me ask you this. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yes. As it yes. To play? Again, as a running back, he's a slasher. He's different than the other guys. So as those change, look, de- gone are the days that kids come into college and expect 25 carries a game. Those days are done. These kids talk more about uh, less tread on the tire than they do heavy load. Okay. Cedric Baxter said that. Jaden Blue, they're talking about that, right? So here's the thing with Trey Wisner is you can have a role as a running back because you're different than the other running backs on the team. So that could be a three, four carry role, right? Okay. We're going to call a couple of little, little different plays here for Trey Wisner, right? Where here's comes the slasher. He's different than Cedric Baxter and Jaden blue and Christian Clark, if he's in there or Savion on red or Jarrett Gibson. So that gives him a chance. And then what you said, he can catch the ball in the backfield and then special teams. He has a lot of value. He can impact winning in different ways. And these, none of these Texas backs or they uh, seemingly right now, things can change, all have an understanding of it's okay to share in the backfield. It's all going to work out long. I, they had it. That's what Nick Saban had going on at Alabama when Josh Jacobs was sharing time with multiple other NFL running backs, whether it's Kenyon Drake or, yep. uh, you know, Der- I mean, all of them, right? They all had different roles and made the most out of their opportunities. And, uh, you know, look, they're making a lot of money in the NFL right now is, uh, because of it. Hey, um, let's go to, to this real quick. I want to say thank you once again, before we go to our fourth one and, and, and our fifth one, Jerry, by the way, has a little bit of a surprise for his fifth pick. I don't want to break the, break the news yet, but uh, I want to say thank you to Allegiant Digital Marketing. Are you a business owner who struggles with any of the following? Finding new customers, consistent leads, finding marketing services to promote your business that actually work. Founder and CEO, Mark, Chad Markham with Allegiant Digital Marketing, an Austin-based advertising agency, has helped thousands of business owners just like you for more than 25 years conquer these same challenges. If you're ready to start making money in your business and grow with confidence, visit AllegiantDigital.com forward slash on Texas football and get a free marketing plan. That's free. Plus, you can save up to $2,500 in advertising with their Hook'em Horns special today, AllegiantDigital.com forward slash uh, on Texas football. want to mention this real quick, Jerry. My fifth guy uh, is really should be no surprise, and that's Baron Soro because uh, he just continues to get better. I mean, look, he's been trending in the right direction since the day he set foot on campus. Mm-hmm. So it should be no surprise to anybody that he's continuing to do so. He's been a just a measure of consistency. And all of these guys that I'm mentioning right now, I think are maximizing. And that is the end of the end result. Because yep. if he wants to be an NFL player, and you know that's I mean, he contemplated trying to go pro this past year. Um, and I think wisely decided to return to school, by the way. Uh he, he just continues to get bigger and bigger and stronger and and quicker and more. I mean. He's going to do – he's going about things the right way, and because he's doing that, Jerry, he's going to end up making a lot of money in the NFL. That's my opinion. Um, not unlike, by the way, and I'm not saying he's the same caliber athlete uh, as Charles Amenahu. If you think back to Charles Amenahu and what he came into Texas, very raw, still trying to figure it all out, ends up four years later being a, a mid-round pick, and now – Seven, eight years after that, or five or six years after that, he's playing in the biggest stage in in, in football allows. Yeah. I'm not so sure that there's not – that's not a good comparison. He may not have the upside of Omenahu, but he's working through and becoming a better player very similarly. Yeah, and I again, I think one of the things I love about the guys we're talking about is they're as strong off the field as they are on the field. 
Um, so we're talking about complete package guys here. Um, and with Baron Sorrell, I mean, look, the guy was once committed to Northwestern, right? He ends up at Texas. Obviously, the guy's a very intelligent guy. Northwestern cast a wide net for a small amount of guys who actually they can get into school there. He was one of those guys. So obviously he's an intelligent, always been mature guy. Um, and the only way you stay process oriented as long as he has is to be is to be in, having a level of intelligence and maturity and really be able to look at the big picture and say, okay, I got to take coaching. I got to develop my body. These are all the things I have to do. And I'm not, I'm not running a sprint here. This is a, is more of a marathon than a sprint. It may be a sprint for Anthony Hill and Colin Simmons in three years. It's not a sprint for Baron Sorrell. Uh, even every kid wants to be in the pros, but every kid's not running a sprint. Some of them are running a marathon. And, and Baron Sorrell's one of those guys. But I think the thing with him that has always impressed me is it, as the play physically goes up a notch, so does his physicality. He can always reach the physicality needed in football. And those guys have a chance to have a career in football if they maximize what they do. Yeah, good stuff. All right, the fifth and final guy on trending for you as it relates to recruiting. And we held this one back because some people are going to be a little a little surprised by this, although I think you've been dropping some hints here and there uh, on these videos a little bit. Go with your fifth uh, trending in the right direction for the Longhorns from a recruiting group. Well, I forgot my fourth, Kalik Lockett. So uh, I, oh, I – no, no, it's okay. It's okay. So I'm, I'm combining four and five. So Kalik Lockett, uh, my fourth guy there, um, I, I think he had a great visit to Texas. Uh, I think the academic and football piece and the development piece, I think, are all there for Texas. Does this mean Kalik Lockett's going to Texas? I'm not saying that. I do think right now, as of uh, heading into the second week in April, things are trending in, in a positive direction for Texas after the visit with Kalik Lockett. He hadn't been on campus in a while. He spent a lot of time, obviously, with K.J. Lacey, the receivers, uh, the other receiver recruits, obviously spent some time with the uh, Texas team, watched the scrimmage, was in the position meeting room. Uh, so I think him and his family came away uh, very positive about the University of Texas. And so I continue to think he's trending up. My fifth guy, I'm going with Troy Hume, 2026 quarterback out of San Marcos, California, uh, Mission Hills High. Uh, and look, I think these I think quarterback recruiting continues to accelerate, especially when Curtis, the number one ranked quarterback in the country, comes off the board to Georgia in late March, right? South Carolina has one of the top uh, seven or eight quarter ranked quarterbacks in the country committed. Uh, so quarterback committing continues to uh, – quarterback recruiting continues to accelerate. And I think Hume's been on campus multiple times, but I think this, this visit sitting in the position rooms, like I said, his father was on the multi-day visit with him. Uh, I think obviously Danny Hernandez as quarterback instructors had a long-standing relationship with Sarkeesian. I think I think Troy can envision himself playing at the University of Texas. So anytime you can envision yourself at a school, it doesn't mean you're absolutely going to tr choose that school, but you're trending up. I mean, because you can't envision every school that you visit. You can't. You, kids don't say I can envision myself at that school. Uh, so when you do, then you're trending up in that recruitment. And then there's also this. His sister was a freshman basketball player at Miami of Ohio last year. Uh, she just transferred to UT Rio Grande Valley. So, I mean, look, there's 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 some connections to Texas there. Um, and he's been everywhere. He's been to LSU. He's been to Ohio State. He's visited a lot of schools. Ohio State offered him this last week. Um, and so it's interesting that he was the first quarterback uh, Texas came in that had come in that had already been offered. Dia Bell visited in March 20, in late March, and they offered him. But Troy Hewn's a guy that was offered and so the first offered quarterback Texas brought in this spring was Troy Hume. Interesting. All right. Uh, I want to mention this uh, 2026 process. Yes. Too. That's All why right. uh, most people were expecting you to go with another uh, 2025. And there are some others. Yeah. To be, to be fair, Jerry had to whittle his list down quite a bit just to get to those that group and even included a bunch of linemen on purpose to, to account for one spot. Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks, Jerry. That's going to do it. For today's uh, roundup uh, brought to you by Allegiant Digital Marketing. Uh, we appreciate Char Chad Markham. Also, if you get a chance, uh, please drop by and visit us over at ontexasfootball.com for more Longhorn coverage. Jerry's got an article up today uh, talking about uh, percentages. He thinks that, that players uh, or recruits might be leaning to Texas or not. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, and, and I'll say this. I'm going to have a little Decorian Moore update here around lunchtime as well.
All right. Thanks, Jerry. I, I appreciate you very much. For Jerry Hamilton, I'm Bobby Burton. This has been On Texas Football. Welcome.